media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Transnet Engineering presents 25 fuel tanker wagons and 20 container wagons to Swaziland Railway in April. Ian Killian tells us more. The wagons, which cost 35 million rand, were delivered ahead of schedule and form part of an order for 90 wagons, with the remaining 45 to be delivered in May. Transit Engineering CEO Tom Sanka Gianne said that TE had fast-tracked the development of the prototypes for two wagon types. We've always believed that for the future of transit engineering, we still need to start enlarging our footprint in, the, in terms of the continent, not only focusing on South Africa, uh, but working with the other railways across the continent. Uh, there are lots of railways in the continent that we are talking to. He added that TE engineers had extensive experience in rolling stock design, manufacturing and building, and together with dedicated workers on the floor, TE achieved the design of a brand new skeletal container wagon, operating on a dual braking system, as well as a fuel tanker wagon in line with Swaziland Railway's requirements. He noted that it usually took around three months to build one prototype wagon. In this instance, however, the manufacturing and design process was completed within two weeks, which enabled TE to go into mass production immediately after the prototype was approved. Swaziland Railway CEO Stevenson Ngobane said that Swaziland Railway had been working with Transnet Engineering for a long time and found that the company was constantly improving. This is a major procurement and they beat other bidders. They've got to meet certain requirements price-wise, quality and delivery time, which is what we have, like we have said today, they've met all those requirements. Johnny further noted that TE was in the process of implementing its Transnet Africa strategy, which was intended to integrate South Africa with the Southern African development community through the promotion of regional rail connectivity. The next biggest activity when it comes to rolling stock, the rails, is going to be in, in Africa. And the movement of commodities and people are at the heart of that. And we as transit engineering are seeing a big opportunity because in terms of the whole African continent, there isn't a single entity that has facilities that can be compared with what we have as transit engineering. So we think that we stand a better chance of benefiting in this next rail renaissance in the rest of Africa. Other news making headlines this week. PPC planning to double business every 10 years. The target of major cement producer PPC to more than double the size of its business every 10 years to retain its market share in Africa is based on the continent's world-leading rate of urbanization and the projection that the population of Africa will double by 2050. We've had a hard look at, at Africa and the, the thing that strikes us is that Africa is going to double in population by the year 2050. We essentially have a 35-year strategy if you want to take advantage of that. Not only is, is it doubling, um, but it, it's got the highest rate of urbanization in the world. So the number of people that will move into urban areas in, in Africa is tremendous. What that tells you is, is the degree of infrastructure spending in Africa has got to be immense over the next 35 years. What does that mean for PPC? If we just start by saying we look at our current Africa market share, which is about 8%, and we say over the next 35 years if we want to maintain that market share, um, uh, we think we have to double this company more than every 10 years, probably around six, every 6 or 7 years, whatever that means, whether it's volumes, profits, etc. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.